Lord bestow upon us his blessing, his mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and unto the age of ages. Today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Misra, and uh, it's the last complete month of the Coptic year calendar. Um, as we know, the new year is September 11th, but on leap years, like this year, it will be September 12th. Um, <clears throat> and as you also know, we celebrated the miracle of the Holy Transfiguration feast yesterday. Um, <clears throat> and the Lord, we won't speak too much about that, but the Lord manifested, as you know, his glory on Mount Tabor. And he did many miracles as well. Um, <clears throat> as St. John says, after the miracle of the Cana of Galilee, um, he says the beginning of signs that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. So uh, the Lord manifested his glory on Tabor, but also in Cana and also when he performed miracles. And it says he disciples believed in him after that. <clears throat> so today we read of another miracle in which um, the, the Lord uh, encourages the transformation of Levi, um, the tax collector who ends up becoming, as we know, uh, St. Matthew, the apostle. <clears throat> and despite this, uh, the, the people around were critical of, of, of the Lord and of what he was doing and the fasting and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but um, today we'll focus a little bit on the concept of miracles um, because many people are, are asking uh, about um, what constitutes a miracle and what does the church do and, and things like that. So in general, miracles is a topic that has captivated the hearts and minds of, of believers and non-believers for centuries. <clears throat> And, um, but before we go into the depth, what, what is a miracle or how can we define it or put it into a working definition so, so we could apply it? So simply, there are extraordinary events that defy ordinary explanations. And um, the natural things um, are one thing, but the supernatural are another, which reveal the power of God or uh, the power of the devil. Um, and so a miracle is a divine action with a divine purpose. A sign or a wonder or something that is done, we'll, we'll later dis discern between um, the two. Um, <clears throat> but a miracle in general is the interaction between the divine and the human, between the heavenly and the earthly, between the invisible and the visible, between the temporal and the eternal. <clears throat> And um, the Lord created the world and created the natural uh, things. Um, but for the miracle, the Lord is entering um, not to override those general laws of nature, but to he, he changes how he, he normally does things as an exception in order to bring a more important message. <clears throat> um, and so in the Coptic Orthodox tradition, Miracles hold a very special place, as we know, and it draws us closer to our faith, and it helps us to offer a glimpse of the manifestation of God's glory. Um, but how can we discern? Um, uh, like, for one thing, we know very well that the Bible is full of miracles, both in the Old and the New Testament. Um, and in, even in the midnight praise, we say, who is like you, O Lord, among uh, the, the, the gods? You are the true God, the performal, performer of miracles. Right? And as we were saying before, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ went about being good. And in the book of Acts, St. Peter says that um, he was Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God, God did through him in your midst. Um, and at the end of the gospel, according to St. John, he says, there are many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that the whole world itself could not contain the books which would be written. This is the last thing that he wrote in his gospel. There's so much more and there's so many miracles, but he only, as we said before, he only focused on seven. Um, and one of the greatest was the fact that the Lord actually took our form and took, um, uh, as, as he fulfilled the, the prediction of the miracle or the prophecy of, of the miracle of the incarnation 
in Isaiah 7, 14. <clears throat> um, however, uh, miracles are not always from God, or they're not always necessary to be performed by God, as we'll get in a minute. Um, but before we get to that, right, um, we, we, I think we need to describe first, well, why are they there? Why are they performed um, by God? So one reason is to convert non-believers to the faith or to help the believers grow in the faith. Right? Um, and this is very prevalent in the gospel. Um, even St. John the Baptist sends a couple of uh, some of his disciples to the Lord. Right? He's in prison, but he sends his disciples to the Lord. Why? To ask what? So in Matthew 11, it says, And when John heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Did he ask this for himself? Of course not. He already knew. He leapt in his, his mother's womb, uh, uh, witnessing to the, to, the, to the Holy Spirit, that dwelt in the Holy Virgin um, or came upon the Holy Virgin and the Lord Jesus Christ um, in, in the womb of St. Mary. Right? <clears throat> but then the Lord answered, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. So, and we know of uh, countless uh, miracles, right? The man who was born blind, he was healed um, without even a asking the Lord, right? Um, the Lord met him and, and said, after, do you believe in, in the Son of God? And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped, right? So for him, the miracle was to bring him to the faith, um, to believe in the Lord and to worship God, right? Um, for, for Lazarus, he had already believed. He didn't need to be resurrected to believe in the Lord. He was a very good friend of the Lord and very faithful. Um, but St. John describes later on in the chapter after the miracle in John 12, he says, because account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. So this was the purpose to bring more people um, to the faith. Um, and uh, St. Augustine says about this, that the miracles were published that they might produce faith. And the faith which they produced brought them into greater prominence. Um, and despite what we are saying, God has a timing and a reason um, because we can say, well, why doesn't God just perform the same miracles in the same amount nowadays so that everyone could just see and believe? Um, it doesn't happen like that. God has his timing. Even with the timing of the Cana of, uh, of Galilee miracle, when he transformed the water into wine, he, before that he told St. Mary what? My hour has not come. It's, it's not the time yet. But, but he also submitted to her, um, uh, her request, her intercession. But the idea here, God wanted to relate to us that there is a timing also for, for God to perform miracles. Um, and he does it in his time in his way and his reasoning. And sometimes if, if, if those things don't line up, God won't perform a miracle. It's okay. Um, and even St. John Chrysostom said, why didn't the Lord Christ perform many miracles before the age of 30? Um, he said they probably would have crucified him before the proper time. Um, that could be one of the reasons. <clears throat> um, and uh, even... The Synaxarium of today shows us that the miracle that that performed um, or that was performed uh, before the non-believers, um, the ones who the one who believed and rejected the faith, um, the the miracle was not for him because it was more of a punishment. Um, but those who didn't know any better and witnessed, they believed, um, they saw and believed. <clears throat> So, uh, as uh, the Lord tells Thomas, blessed are those who believe without seeing, right? Um, so, so, the whole purpose is faith, to grow in faith. If we already have the faith, we might not necessarily need the miracle. Um, but especially for those who, who need to believe, sometimes God uses the miracles um, to open up their eyes and see. 
Another reason has to do with faith of to, to reveal the faith of the person that the miracle is happening to, um, for example, or out of mercy from the Lord. Um, but for example, in the book of Acts, um, uh, there was someone crippled from the womb in the city of Lystra, and he heard St. Paul speaking, and St. Paul looked at him and saw the faith in him. I don't know how, but he was able to recognize, he said, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. So St. Paul recognized that this man had a strong faith. So he, he said, stand up straight on your feet. And he did. And he leaped and he walked. Now this happened, I mean, the healing of the, the, the cripple or the paralyzed happened many times in the gospel as well in the book of Acts. Um, uh, and also when the daughter of the Canaanite woman was healed because of her faith, um, the Lord said what? O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Um, and, and the daughter was healed from that very hour. And same thing with the, with the woman who touched the hem of the garment of the Lord. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So God sometimes wants to reward us for our strong faith by performing the miracle. Maybe not necessarily for us, um, uh, but also for those who witness and see the result of the strong faith. <clears throat> Furthermore, the Lord called his disciples to perform miracles when he sent them out to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, to cast out the demons. Um, and uh, even he said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works. So even the Lord was saying, there's going to be greater, you're, you're going to perform greater miracles than me. It's not a problem. Um, I will give you the power. Um, <clears throat> but um, so, so the idea here is we need to focus more on the faith, growing my faith, growing the, the, the people witnessing uh, of the faith. And that's what's more important. Even if the person performing the miracle is, is not necessarily holy, God can still do a, a, a miracle through them. There's a story uh, about Abba Daniel of Cetus in, in the early church, um, and actually not really about him, but uh, there was a thief who um, disguised himself as Abba Daniel, and he went to he, he went to a convent. He pretended to be him, um, and he he wanted to get probably some money or some donations from them. I don't know. Um, so uh, the nuns gathered and and. Uh, the, the abbess said, please wait, we have a nun here who is blind. Um, we need you to bless her. <laughs> so he didn't know what to do. So he just said, okay, um, just tell her uh, to, to, to wash her eyes from the water um, that, that we wash the feet with. Um, so she did so. And with a strong faith, um, she was healed. <laughs> and, and so... And, and he, he, he was very remorseful. He began to weep for, for days. They thought he was just being humble. But the idea here is that the faith of this, um, this faithful nun, as well as the others um, who, who brought them to him, um, led to the, to the healing of this person. Okay? Um, so that's the one side of the, the, the miracles that we have in the church. On the other side, um, there are many things that the Lord refused to perform or he did not perform miracles. Um, for example, um, uh, when, when Herod came um, to kill the children, he could have killed Herod, right? Or he could have stopped the soldiers from coming. But what did the Lord decide to do? He fled. <laughs> um, uh, of course, this was God's will. He, he embraced his limitation um, on the Mount of Temptation. He could have transformed the, the bread, right, the, the stone into bread. And even the devil said, okay, if you're the son of God, do this. Of course, he didn't do it, right? Um, he refused to perform that miracle. Um, when he walked along the, the way to Samaria, he was tired. He sat at the well, wanted something. He could have snapped his fingers and immediately, you know, been there. Um, but 
he did many things in, in the flesh and refused to perform certain miracles. Even in public when the people sat on the cross, right? Um, if you are the son of man, um, come down from the cross. Of course, that was um, against the will of God. So um, furthermore, sometimes the Lord performed miracles in public. Sometimes he did it in private. And oftentimes he did not want them to be publicized. Like when he cleansed the leper in the gospel according to St. Mark. Actually, St. Mark mentions at least three um, in chapter one. And then in chapter five, he, when he raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead, um, one of the um, miracles he performed, he commanded strictly that no one should know. Um, uh, and after the transfiguration, he told his disciples what he commanded them, tell no one until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. So there was a timing here also. Um, so uh, just like to, to summarize this point, God performs miracles we know, but he also sometimes does not allow certain miracles to be performed. Um, the third point is that the devil has power also to do signs and wonders. Um, as it's mentioned in the book of Revelation, uh, it says the beast was granted to perform signs and wonders so that even he makes fire come down from heaven in the sight of men. Um, so just because a supernatural event happens does not necessarily mean it comes from God. We have to be careful um, because even the, the, the elect, as the gospel says, will be deceived. So we have to be careful. Um, <clears throat> um, and uh, and as St. Paul says to the Thessalonians, he says, um, the lawless one will be revealed, the Antichrist. Um, and he says, it's according to the work of Satan, with all power signs and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception. Um, so um, we have to make sure we just don't go to one extreme or the other. One extreme of hardening our heart, like Pharaoh in the Old Testament, no matter what happens and, and what signs and wonders you see, you just deny God. But we don't want to be on that extreme. We realize that God is the performer of miracles and expected to have miracles to happen in the church. Um, God can do anything. As he, and he sent out his disciples to perform wonders. But we can't be too doubtful. We can be critical, but not too doubtful. Um, like those who went to the blind man, interrogated him, then went to the parents, interrogated him. They knew very well that a miracle had happened, um, but they refused to believe in the Lord. Um, <clears throat> so on the other side, we have to make sure we don't get carried away or chase after these miracles um, uh, uh, and, and this sensationalism. Um, because as the Lord said, the evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign. So he says no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, maybe I think what happens in the history of the church sometimes when one generation goes to one extreme too much, the other generation may go to the other extreme. So we have to be careful. We believe in miracles but also we don't believe everything. Um, and so in the Coptic Orthodox Church there's a framework right? Um and in her wisdom, she keeps the boundaries uh, to some extent, right? So in general, what the church says, if there's a miracle that's performed in pri private, keep it in private. Um, there's no need um, to publicize it. Um, and uh, like we said in the Holy Transfiguration um, and many other miracles, the Lord commanded when he did it in private to keep it in private, at least for a time. And he says this out, out of... Um, to, to, to make sure that pride doesn't get to either the performer of the miracles or the receiver of the miracles. Um, because, for example, um, when one time the Metropolitan was speaking with me, he was saying, and someone told me they, they saw St. Mary. Um, and they asked me, should I tell? <laughs> should I tell my friends? He's like, well, first of all, if they believe you, they're going to think you're a saint. So you don't want that. If they don't believe you, then they could be, you know, it's on their heads 
for judging, you know, so better not to say. Um, so um, that's what, so that's why the church, if it's in private, keep it. if it's in public though, it's, it's not my place to discern whether it comes from God or not. But there are some signs, there are some understanding. For example, let's say if uh, there's an icon in someone's house that's, uh, that's uh, seeping oil, what do we do? Bring everyone in the church, say, let's go visit and, and do some uh, to lead there. No, we say, bring it to the church or have, the, have a woman or someone go and, and pray uh, one of the liturgical prayers, whether it's the Andil or, or something like that. <clears throat> then see what happens. And sometimes they bring it on the altar and it will stay there for, for, for days so we can celebrate the liturgy on it. Does it grow or does it stop? If it stops, it's not from God, right? If it, uh, it happened in, actually in New York a, a few, many years ago, and it began to, um, they brought it to the church and it began to um, drip even more oil. Um, so um, same thing with the, the apparition of the Holy Virgin in the city of Zaytun, um, starting from like 1968 to uh, over, over three years of, of the, the Holy Virgin appeared. <clears throat> so what did Pope Carlos do? Did he run right away to, to see for himself? No, he, wait, he probably saw the Holy Virgin many times personally, um, so he didn't have to go see. But he sent bishops to investigate, right? To, why? So the people can believe. And then he made a statement a month later. <laughs> um, uh, he knew very well that, it, but, but he, he wanted to follow the, the church rules and to, to show that there is a process for us to accept or not. But for us who are not involved in that process, what do we do? We need to make sure that our faith is strong. We don't go to one extreme or the other, but we, uh, we evaluate um, our spiritual life based on it. If, if I'm fighting against it, then there's a problem. Um, why am I fighting so hard against something, especially if it's not my, in my place? Um, maybe I, I'm doubting the power of God or I'm judging the people to whom miracles happen with, or maybe I'm upset at God because it's not happening to me. It could be a number of different things, but I have to be careful, right? And I can't go to the other extreme, so okay, I'm gonna book a flight right now just so I can see. Well, uh, I think I uh, told you this story, but there was a deacon once who heard about the light that happens during the resurrection in Jerusalem. So he's like, excuse me, I'm gonna go, uh, and I have to see it for myself. So, uh, Another time during the liturgy, Abuna brought the, the deacon um, in the middle of the liturgy. He said, he, he said, he gave him a candle. He said, here, go. Um, take this candle and just approach the body after the consecration. And it lit up. He's like, see, you don't need to go to Jerusalem. You, you have the miracle here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the idea here is that the fathers teach for us, as well as the church, that the true miracles are, are not meant to gratify our curiosity or our desire for entertainment, or even um, uh, helping us to go from one state of faith to the other. Um, <clears throat> as St. John Chrysostom says, um, when the Lord Christ uh, saved St. Peter, um, he said, saving his people from the depth of hell, he crowns all the miracles with his power. Right? Um, and St. Augustine says, we ought not to wonder that a miracle was made, but rather we should rejoice and wonder that our Lord Savior Jesus Christ was made man and that God did works among men. Like just the fact that God did works here on earth among his servants, that's a miracle in itself. Um, <clears throat> and then St. Augustine also says in another place, the blind does not know, uh, now open its eyes by a miracle of the Lord, but the blind heart opens its eyes to the word of the Lord. The mortal corpse does not now rise again, but the soul rises again, which lays dead in a living body. The ears of the deaf are not now opened, but many closed hearts now fly open at the penetration of divine truth, so that they who believe, who did not believe, believe, and they live well who did, who did live boldly, 
and they obey who acted disobediently, and we exclaim such a person has become a believer. So the fact that um, we believe with our hearts and we see God with our the eyes of our hearts and we um, we are able to walk to Him uh, uh, spiritually, these are the miracles that we need to focus on. Um, <clears throat> Uh, St. John Chrysostom also says, if you change from inhumanity to almsgiving, you have stretched forth the hand that was withered. So that's a miracle. And then he said, if you withdraw from theaters or just evil places and go to church, you have cured the lame. If you have uh, draw back your eyes from beauty that is not your own, you have opened them when they were blind. If instead of satanic songs, you have learned spiritual psalms being mute, you have spoken. These are, he says, these are the greatest miracles. Um, these are the most wonderful signs. <clears throat> so the greatest miracle is not moving mountains, but um, God working through through love. <clears throat> and um, as St. John Chrysostom also says, feeding the hungry is greater work than raising the dead. Um, so uh, St. John of the Latter also says, um, we, sh we won't be judged on whether we perform miracles on the judgment day, but... Um, we will be judged because we have never um, cried of our separation from God. So um, this this is the real miracle: is that we want God to we want to witness the miracle of God working in us and in the church and in the believers and even in the non-believers. Because God working with His people um, is uh, is the the divine miracle of love that transforms hearts. And, and changes the world to become heaven. Um, may the Lord allow us to experience and taste uh, the, the, the invisible miracles more than the visible. And glory be to him now and forever to each of